Star Wars is a sci-fi film that's a master reputation for being the most legendary of its kind. Unbelievable efforts behind the scenes were made in order to bring people's dreams to life. The merchandise has captivated many fans and collectors from around the world. It's possible that even the government might have taken it a little bit too seriously. From secret projects that seem to resemble things out of the film to harsh weather conditions on the set. Here are secrets about Star Wars. But first, we'd like to give a quick shout out to Call the Cops, IDGIF, for getting the right answer on last week's trivia question. Number 13, Chewbacca Merchandise Auction. We hate to break it to you guys, but kind of like Santa Claus, Chewbacca is a guy in a suit. Many might not always realize it, but famous movie props go for big bucks. In July of 2012, an auction house sold to a private buyer at a Profiles in History auction. Imagine walking around in a redwood forest wearing this thing. The prop was used on screen and it was described as being the most complete and finest screen wore Chewbacca mask. People stopped bidding at $104,550 and it was sold to a new owner. The collector had a little bit extra to spend and also picked up some autographs from Peter Mayhew, who played Chewbacca, and Stuart Freeborn, who designed the costume. Number 12, Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. This is basically the holy grail for all Star Wars fans. Being able to hold a real lightsaber that was held in the same hands as Mark Hamill would probably cause some nerds to never wash their hands again. This one here was used in Star Wars A New Hope in 1977 and The Empire Strikes Back in 1980. This device used a wooden pole where the blade then covered with special projection paint to add the effects afterwards, where the blade then covered with deadly weapon. It was sold at auction for $200,000. Number 11, your own destroyer. With the advancements in drones coming a long way in recent years, people can enjoy them for personal use as well. How would you like to own your very own Imperial Star Destroyer spaceship? This is about as close as you're going to get, and it doesn't come with a laser beam, unfortunately. Its design allows it to fly, but when winds don't get above 5 to 10 miles per hour, people might get a little bit frightened when they see this drone being flown around their neighborhood and mistake it for a UFO. This is built with a custom carbon and aluminum frame and a nozzle flight control with the Free Sky radio system. Many reviewers say it's not too hard to control. Number 10, Star Wars Melting Stormtrooper. In a galaxy far, far away, there were melting stormtroopers. It looks like these stormtroopers might have been left outside on a sunny day. Or could it be just another weird toy? This is an officially licensed Star Wars product that features a white blob of putty that you stick with arms, legs, a helmet, and a gun. After you leave the stormtrooper out for a while, you can come back in about 25 minutes and notice that it's completely melted. Hopefully no stormtroopers were harmed in the making of this. Number 9, the Mount Etna Explosion. Imagine you're filming a movie and all of a sudden a volcano explodes. It's almost like you have to put it in your movie somehow, right? That seemed to be the case in 2002 while filming for Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Seismic activities caused the eastern flanks of the massive Italian volcano to erupt, which caused many landslides and a bright orange lava flow. While it might suck to live there when it happened, it must have been pretty cool to film at least. Smoke could be seen from space and even as far away as the country of Libya. Footage was recorded by Lucasfilm and used as a part of the landscape in the planet of Mustabar, making it look pretty epic. You might think all the lava is just digital effects, but some of it is actually real. If you watch the original video that was taken, you'll notice a lot of similarities and those fiery lava explosions are the real deal. It makes for one heck of a lightsaber location, that's for sure. Number 8. Carrie Fisher Han Solo Romance If it seemed like Carrie Fisher and Han Solo already kinda had a thing for each other on the film, it turns out maybe not all of it was acting. In the book The Princess Diaries, the author states it was Han and Leia during the week and Carrie and Harrison during the weekend. Carrie Fisher was only 19 at the time and Ford was 33, which is still a little bit of an age difference. Carrie felt as though she didn't really want to get involved, but it just felt right and the affair lasted about 3 months. She claimed not to remember much of the romance because she was too stoned most of the time. Harrison went on to divorce his wife in 1979 and never spoke much about the steamy onset romance. Number 7, The Hoth Set. Intense weather can make for a cool setting in films, but getting those shots isn't always easy. In the case of the filming of A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, the crew had to put up with frigid conditions in Northern Europe. Blizzards were ravaging across Norway and it presented serious challenges if they wanted to film the scene. The crew endured whiteouts, blizzards, avalanches, and they put up with temperatures below negative 10 degrees, not including wind chill. 
In order for Harrison to get there, he had to take a snowplow from the city of Oslo to the town of Finse. Finally, they gave up on trying to bring the equipment outside and decided to film from their hotel rooms. Acting can certainly have some unique challenges occasionally, and great minds must come together in order to figure out how to make it. Number 6. Luke Starkiller? Trying to come up with unique names to call all the Star Wars characters was probably harder than you thought. You might want something that sounds cool, but at the same time, you don't want to get a negative connotation for the protagonist. Originally, Luke's last name was going to be Starkiller and not Luke Skywalker. Finally, they decided to change the name last minute because they didn't want the name Starkiller to be associated with Charles Manson, according to George Lucas. The term Starkiller, though, would have been used for things such as the Starkiller base. Number 5. Star Wars Project Is it just slightly a coincidence that not too long after the film Star Wars was released, our government started becoming more and more concerned about attacks from outer space? In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan was looking for any way possible to prevent America from becoming a victim of a nuclear attack. This was known as the Star Wars Project and included a nuclear laser beam being put into space. Not only that, they tested out 747s equipped with laser beams to see if it would work against intercontinental ballistic missiles. But it turns out that this idea didn't work because the plane would have to get extremely close to the missile in order for it to be effective. They wanted to fit naval ships to fire rocket interceptors, but this would mean changing out the guns. It's estimated that the Star Wars project cost taxpayers roughly $17 billion. There still doesn't seem to be anything that we know of that can shoot down a nuke. In any case, it seemed like the government was getting a little bit too excited about Star Wars, and much laser research was done. Number 4. Yoda the Time Traveler Star Wars fans probably haven't heard of the Smithfield Decretals, which was a pretty mysterious book, displaying various characters. But, do we see Yoda being depicted here in this photo? If it weren't for the bizarre, mysterious illustrations of this book, it wouldn't be quite as mysterious. The Smithfield Decretals was ordered as a book for common law by Pope Gregory during the 13th century. It might be the photos of a homicidal maniac rabbit that might make people a little bit confused. British scholars noted that Star Wars fans might get a little bit excited when they see the medieval version of some Yoda-looking creature. Some would even claim the strange illustrations are supposed to depict the world upside down or an opposite world that would exist without law. But could the writers of this book have possibly known something about Star Wars in the future? Number 3. Who is Yoda anyways? One of the biggest mysteries about Star Wars appears to be the true origins of Yoda. The species of whatever Yoda is supposed to be still remains a mystery. George Lucas even admitted that Yoda has no background. He comes and goes, he's subversive, secret, mysterious stranger that enters the end of the film. Some would believe he's an elf, while others believe he's the illegitimate child between Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog. That's sort of an interesting statement considering how in the Smithfield Decretals he's displayed with webbed hands. Or maybe he's just a dog like we see in this photo? Number 2. Fans Outraged Many fans out there feel as though the last Star Wars that came out needs to be redone, and there are some people who really, really hate this one. Luke Skywalker made his return to Star Wars in 2017, which certainly did not follow the formula, and it seemed a lot less cool than what people expected. Many felt like women dominated the large roles due to a woman's right activist having a more prominent role in the script writing. Men played much more antagonistic roles or were killed off in some dumb fashion. There was nothing really interesting in the background of Rey, especially how she magically got so good at using a lightsaber. Some are seriously worried about the future of Star Wars and the lack of original characters that are left. Critics such as Ben Shapiro believe that this whole movie should just be completely forgotten about and we can just pretend this whole thing never happened. Let us know what you think in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 1. George Lucas Divorce you would assume that George Lucas made his wife, Maria Lucas, really happy by all the money he brought back home from his success. But sometimes, once you get into Star Wars life, you just can't get out. Creating an empire is certainly a challenging task, and it took its toll on George Lucas and his marriage. His wife had an active role in some of the editing and questioning some of George Lucas' decision in the plotline of the film. On top of it, they weren't able to have children together, and the Skywalker Ranch was also becoming a priority to him. In 1983, the two split up for good, and she would never get herself back into the film industry ever again. Some still feel that the movie might have brought an end to the relationship. Wow, now that was a great video. Don't go anywhere just yet. We got some trivia for you. If you could name these three Star Wars characters, we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Good luck, and may the Force be with you. Mm-hmm.